I'm Julian Davis, um, the principal of Abbey College Cambridge, and you can see behind me there is a beautiful picture of Abbey College Cambridge, or at least part of the campus. And <clears throat> just so you know, I am currently inside the building and I am just over there. That's where I'm sitting right now in Abbey College Cambridge. So welcome to the seminar. Um, thank you for joining and thank you for giving us the time this morning, it's morning in the UK, it's 10 o'clock. Um, I would like to talk you through a little bit about how the school is going to run um, this year, certainly for the first term. And I'll talk you through how we're gonna start, how we're gonna restart the education here, how we're gonna keep everybody safe, and how you are gonna achieve amazing things at Abbey College Cambridge. So, if I just move it forward, ah, there we go. I'm going to update you with some of the news. <clears throat> I'm going to talk about the UK today, what life is like here, because I'm sure you've heard lots of news about the situation in the UK. So what is, what is happening right now? <clears throat> then we're going to look at some of the practicalities, some helpful information for you before you actually get on the plane and come over to join us, things that we'll ask you to do. What will happen when you arrive? Actually, let's talk about what happens when you get to the UK at the airport because I know if you're the, coming for the first time, you'll be nervous. And of course, because of the virus, you'll be perhaps even more nervous about what to expect. But don't worry, um, it, we've got lots of measures in place that will keep you very safe. So I'll talk about that. Then we'll talk about what will happen when you arrive at the college. And I'll talk you through the government rules about arriving into the UK. There's a quarantine. We're going to offer you the best possible quarantine you can imagine. You'll be doing that in Abbey College, in your study bedroom, and you'll be learning during that time. So I'll give you the details on that as well. And then we're also going to uh, help some students who will be studying from home at the start of the year for a short time, perhaps a few weeks or a few months. We call that remote learning. Then we're going to talk about those who are here, what we do after quarantine is ended. We're going to look at what, what if, what happens if there's a case in, in, in the local area, in the school. Cases are very low right now in Cambridgeshire. And um, then I'm going to talk through some of uh, the questions that you might have put on the chat. So as John has mentioned, if you have questions, type them in the chat box. John is going to look at that and then he's going to ask me those questions at the end on your behalf. Okay, so latest news from Abbey Cambridge. There's a lot of information on your screen. So let's pause and get our bearings. On the left, you'll see A-level results. These are the A-level results given to our students this year. On the right are the GCSE results. And you can see for GCSE, the results come through as a number. I translated the number into a letter for you. So if you're not familiar with GCSE, nine is the top grade, which is equivalent to a super A-star. We call it a star star. Eight is an A-star, seven is an A. So what can we see from that? The students this year who've just finished their exams, A-level and GCSE, have been awarded extraordinary results. Very, very high results. Um, as you can see, there were a tiny number of results that came through at A-level at C. So A star, A and B, 98% of the students given those awards. That is what we want for you. We want you to obtain A stars, A's and B's. A GCSE, A star, star, A star and A. That is our target for all students. And that's why you're coming here. We know that. We know you're coming all the way to the UK to be highly successful in your examinations. So rest assured, this year, that is what's happened. Look at those extraordinary results for the students who are in your situation, some of them two years ago when they were worried about coming to the UK. Two years later, they've got these amazing results. Why is that important? Well, we all know the main driving reason why you're coming here. And that's ultimately to go to university and get an amazing UK education from GCSE perhaps or A-level right through to undergraduate. And if you look at the bottom left, we call it G5, the UK's top five elite universities. I do hope you've heard of these universities. They're very famous. They are world highly ranked universities. That for us is a sign of elite performance, top performance. And a lot of our students want to go to those universities. And you can see we have students going in 
every year to Oxford and Cambridge, to, to, to LSE, to Imperial and UCL, those top five. And you can see this year is no difference. So that's what those results have allowed is those students to get into extraordinary universities, which is what you're targeting, I have no doubt. And you can see, interestingly, UCL, which is University College London. We think of that as being in the G5, top-ranked, world-class university. 28 students are going there this September. Extraordinary number. UCL takes more students from Abbey College, Cambridge, than any other university. So it's quite an achievement for the students at Abbey Cambridge. So overall, about 30% of our students go to G5, the two A-levels. And right now for Russell Group, it's 58% and counting. So that's the news. Good news as always. I'm sure you've looked back at perhaps our website to see what have students done in previous years. And this is the story for Abbey Cambridge for the past 25 years. This is not unusual. This is what we do and this is what we want to do with you. We can't wait. Okay, let's look at health. So let's look at the serious matter about the global pandemic and the coronavirus. So we all know this thing broke in the uh, winter and spring uh, of this year and it hit the UK in March. And you can see there, this is the response, response of the healthcare system. So it, it, it effectively, it's actually the number of people in hospital beds. Um, and it looks a lot, 20,000. Um, we actually have 170,000 hospital beds in the UK. So even at the height of the pandemic, um, it was a fraction. It was, um, what, what is that, around about one, one eighth of the beds were used for COVID. Still significant um, for that time in April when the, the pandemic um, hit. You can see since then, um, the numbers have gone down. It looks very encouraging for, for this country. And you can see hospital bed admissions now are, are very low. Uh, we, we feel we're coming through uh, towards the end. We're not complacent. There are lots of measures still there, but it's a very encouraging story. And I'll talk you through life in the UK. It's coming back to normal. Schools are opening, for example. Um, it is uh, for some cases, perhaps half of a percent. Uh, it's a fatal illness. We know this, and this is why we're so worried. And so um, I'm going to give you the stats on, on the number of deaths in the UK per day. And you can see it follows a similar pattern in the spring, in April, and going into uh, to May a little bit. The death curve went up. Um, we know, of course, now it's highly uh, associated with the elderly and those elderly patients with what are called comorbidities, and that, that is underpinned in the deaths, certainly in the UK. Um, but look, what's reassuring for the folk here, and I hope for you, is that graph has now um, hit a very low number um, of, of, of daily deaths. So we, we are in low single figures, you know, I think there was two uh, yesterday across the whole of the UK. Um, every death is, is something we, we are concerned about and we're not complacent, but let's not forget also there are 66 million people that live in the UK. Um, so those, those numbers uh, are, are looking very encouraging. Okay, that's where we are in terms of the statistics. What about life? Well, schools for younger children reopened in June. Uh, I have two younger children and one of them was back in school in June. Um, public transport is now back open. Um, we wear face masks on public transport. Uh, that's, that's obligatory. And uh, you'll find this when you arrive in the UK, your taxi driver will be wearing a mask and you will be expected to wear one in the taxi. Uh, when you transfer from the airport. Uh, shops are fully now open, all shops are open. Again, face masks are used, we are keeping these measures in. Um, cafes and restaurants are now open and actually the government are very keen for us all to go out and start the economy moving in cafes and restaurants and so um, the, the government are actually part funding some of the meals which is quite interesting on some of the days but that's life back to normal. Um, gyms, swimming pools now open, uh, we can now meet friends. We can't have groups of social gatherings that are too large. So that's uh, still regulated. There are though local outbreaks. So in the UK, there are, I believe, two cities where the number of cases has, has risen above uh, a certain number the government are happy with. And so there's a city in the north of England um, called Leicester, which is They've, they've tightened some of the restrictions. So they've, they've unwound some of the above measures. So for example, they've 
increased restrictions on gyms and swimming pools. They've increased restrictions on cafes. They're about to pull them back down again. So that's the way the government will respond in the future. They're looking locally. We've got highly detailed information. And if the government see a particular area, a particular city where the numbers of cases seem to go up, they will introduce more of these measures and they'll restrict until the numbers come back down. And that seems to work. But you need to be reassured, I, I would say, because in the area that Abbey Cambridge is, this is an area of Cambridgeshire, cases are very low and have been very low in Cambridgeshire since the start. So this is one of the areas of the UK where cases are lower than other areas. So there is a localised lo localized lockdown for governments if they wish to use it. And of course, as you will experience, there are fewer international flights happening right now. Okay, speaking of flights, you should have received a welcome pack. If you haven't, please contact us. I'm sure you will have. The welcome pack is sent uh, by us before you arrive, just to introduce you to an awful lot of information about the UK, what to expect, what it's like here, how to prepare yourself. So please do read. Um, we also will be sending newsletters. Again, if you've been in contact with us, you'll be on our list, our email list, and you'll be receiving uh, newsletters giving you up-to-date information. Okay, so um, before you fly, well, there we are. There's examples of the kinds of things that we have done, including the seminar. There's a picture of me. And there's a picture of my colleague uh, who's called Carolyn Dunn. She looks after the, the well-being of students, pastoral care and sport and so on. So these are some of the seminars that we've run as an example of the communication that we're doing right now. OK, before you fly, well, we would like you to complete some information. So you must contact us with your flight information and we will send you in return some documents or, or a leaflet for you to fill in. So there's this page here that you return to us and another page from the boarding school association. So it's relatively straightforward information, name, address, arrival times, and so on. We will use that information for our records so we know when to expect you to organize the arrivals. And also um, we will give you advice about the document that you should have with you when you arrive, because it's much easier for the UK customs and for the, uh, the people looking after safety if you have one of these documents, the BSA document with you. So you can show them and they'll recognize that because BSA, the red logo on the right hand side leaflet, that's an inter a nationally known body called the Boarding Schools Association. We are a member, all students coming to schools in this association will have this letter. So it's something that in Heathrow Airport, they will recognize and they'll go, oh, I, I see, I know where you're going, I understand. So we will talk you through that in more detail individually from our team at this end. So just be reassured, these are the documents that you need um, to arrive safely at the airport. Okay, so meal info and visas, right. Well, when you arrive in the UK, you'll be entering quarantine. I'll talk a little bit more about quarantine in detail, but you will be asked beforehand to choose your meals. So during quarantine, um, it's a, a UK uh, rule right now, as is common in other countries, you'll have 14 day quarantine in Abbey College. During that time, the dining room will not be open for you, of course, because you'll be quarantining with a small group of students. We call that a bubble. So during quarantine, your food will be brought to you in an individual container with the meal of your choice. So before you arrive, we'll also be asking you to pick from a large menu for the first two weeks, the meals you'd like to choose. So that's meal info. So you'll get your choice of meal delivered by our friendly catering staff. And the meals here are wonderful. I have my lunch here every day. Wonderful. We'll also be in contact with you about visas, of course. And no doubt for most of you, that's already in process. Um, we would like to help you with the banks. Um, every year, part of induction, we help you with your uh, administration of various issues such as bank, uh, bank account opening. So rest assured, we can open a UK bank account with you here, and we will be with you, helping you with that. Um, the banks are, are able to come into the college to do that, so you don't necess necessarily need to go into Cambridge to do that yourself. However, given the restrictions, it is easier for you if you can set up an international bank account before you come. So um, a good example might be the bank HSBC. 
and that's a, a bank that's got many branches in the UK. And of course, it stands for Hong Kong Shanghai Bank. So if you are in that, uh, that part of the world, uh, you may wish to start your, your HSBC uh, account from there before you arrive. That would be uh, certainly helpful for you. At the airport. So um, because of the information that you would have sent to us with those uh, leaflets, the, 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 the document, our team will arrange the, uh, the airport collection for you. There will be a very um, uh, a, a sign with a, with a friendly taxi driver or a friendly minibus driver with Abbey College, Cambridge, and they'll be wearing masks. Um, they, they'll be um, uh, welcoming you at the arrivals area of the airport, usually Heathrow. And you'll be collected either in a taxi or in a minibus, uh, depending on how many students who are starting at Abbey Cambridge arrive on the same flight. So if there's three or four students, it may well be that you're collected together in a minibus. Of course, the minibus will have lots of spaces in it, so you won't be sitting next to an individual, but you will be wearing your mask on the college minibus or in the uh, taxi that's been arranged for you. So this is COVID safe transport. And uh, we spend a lot of time working with uh, the, the taxi company to make sure that uh, they understand the rules that we will insist on. And they do. And those rules, by the way, are from the boarding school association. So if you recall, that is the association that all good boarding schools like us belong to in the UK. And we have all agreed what is safe travel. So we've all agreed to follow the same rules. So that is what you will receive when you arrive in the UK. So. On arrival for the first 14 days, we will enter quarantine and that starts for the students who are arriving at the beginning of term on the 7th of September. Okay, during quarantine, you will be in a small group of students. So you'll be in an individual single room. You will have your en suite in that room um, and you will be with other students. So it, it may be that uh, there are another seven students on your corridor and you are permitted to isolate together if you wish. In other words, you can go to a common room with those other seven children for the duration of quarantine. Okay. During quarantine, catering, as I mentioned, your food will be brought up to you. Whichever boarding house you're in, it'll be delivered fresh and, fresh and, and hot and of your choice. Don't forget, you will choose before you arrive the meals that you want. That will be delivered for you. And Let's go through. Here's an example. Um, what's for lunch? Let's see. Uh, mm, so if it was uh, Wednesday, we'd have West African style chicken thighs or star anasi ginger beef or chickpea jack and jackfruit and pepper barbecue wrap uh, with potatoes, rice. There's also a huge uh, salad bar uh, range of options as well. So this is what you'll be asked. Choose a meal for lunch. You can see that's the top table. Choose your supper. So do you want this evening Kung Po chicken, lamb ragu or soya sausages for your supper? Hmm, I think I'll have the lamb. Lovely. The food is delicious. I, I say that hand on heart. I really do uh, believe that because I, as I said, I have my lunch here every day uh, in the, uh, the dining room and the normal conditions, of course, it'll be different for the, for the time during quarantine. So you will get this information. You don't need to write this down and choose right now, of course. You'll be sent this from our wonderful team at this end. Okay, great, wonderful. Um, and that's an example of the form that you will be completing about the, um, the, men the menu options. So it's relatively straightforward. You just say, well, on that day, I'll have this meal. Thank you very much. Okay, good. Uh, during catering, um, laundry will be uh, taken care of. We'll have a system to uh, collect. Uh, there'll be boarding staff on duty. As you know, Abbey College prides itself on looking after students with a very, very high level of care. So we have 36 people that work here whose job is to look after you in your boarding house. We have four boarding houses. So there are always people around, always people on duty. During quarantine, you'll be in your bubble which uh, means that you're with your, your new group of friends together on your boarding floor. So anybody coming into that bubble, so the boarding staff that come in, will of course be wearing PPE, masks and gloves and so on. And that is to make sure that you're kept isolated 
from the outside. So no illness is brought in and, and or, or back out. So you're, you're isolated, but you will see staff from Abbey College. You'll see boarding staff who'll be coming in and there'll be activities. Uh, you'll be brought meals and you'll have contact during that time. Okay, you'll also have outdoor time. So you're not gonna be stuck in your bedroom and in the common room for the whole time. So three times a day, there'll be quite a lot of time where you will be in your bubble, allowed outdoors in a part of our courtyard. It'll be a contained area outside that only you and your bubble will be permitted to go to during that time. And then that will happen three times a day. So you'll get outdoor space. So you'll have a chance to get a little bit of fresh air, see the sky and have three or four hours outdoors um, just to uh, refresh yourself a little bit. We're also going to undertake induction during quarantine. So, of course, induction is where we give you more information about how it'll be to be a student in the college actually what is life going to be like um, we're also going to register you with the health services here we have a matron and the matron will be uh, talking to you um, about uh, your uh, health to see if there is, is any information about health we need to know that's an example we also do the visa work the bank account work and we introduce you to your new house so you'll be part of a house structure there are seven houses in abbey college cambridge and we, we have houses called Juno, Hero, Zeus, Apollo. You'll be in one of those houses, you and about a seventh of the school. That will give you a, sen a sense of identity in the school. It, it changes the colour of your lanyard. So if you're in a uh, Juno house, you'll have a green lanyard. And then after quarantine, all of those with green lanyards are in the same house as you. So when we have competitions and events, you'll be working together as a team. So it's a great fun part of the school, actually. I'm, I'm sure you'll enjoy that element of being part of a team within the college. Um, so you'll, you'll learn all about that during induction as well. Um, OK, during induction, uh, during quarantine, sorry, we are also going to crack on. We're going to start the education for you because one of the key ideas during quarantine is that you are not affected with your education. Your education starts on the first day of teaching, which is actually Tuesday the 8th of September. So Monday the 7th is induction, which we'll do in your quarantine. Tuesday the 8th, we start, start teaching. Okay, remote learning. Well, how does this happen? We will be teaching through the computer. You will be on the other end. We're using Teams and Teams is very much like Zoom. So you'll get the same experience you're getting now. You'll be in your study bedroom, of course, in quarantine on your own because you'll be isolating for lesson time in your study bedroom. The lessons will start at 9 a.m. and finish at 3 p.m. You will have all of your lessons that you will be expecting in Abbey College. All of your subjects will be happening. Um, so let me show you uh, uh, some, some, some information. We've been conducting remote lessons um, during the lockdown period. So you recall in March to June in the UK, schools lockdown, they ended lockdown in June. During that time, we taught all of our students remotely through the computer. So the way we do this is actually your teacher, the same teacher that you've had before perhaps, um, will be at the other end of the screen with the class and there might be 10 students on the screen and the lessons will be delivered through electronic means so the notes will be presented to you you'll have those notes on a one drive that's a, a bit of software where you'll keep all your electronic information and um, you you'll be receiving the lessons at the same pace as if you were in school so you won't fall behind and you'll get the same homework. We'll even do the same testing and we'll also be providing the start of the UCAS advice during this time. So life carries on for, for, as if it was normal. So you don't fall behind. OK, so BYOD, bring your own device. It is far better for you during quarantine when you're receiving your lessons between nine o'clock and three o'clock every day. It's far better if you're working on a laptop or a tablet, a device, in other words, with a larger screen. Please don't rely on just your phone. The screen is simply not big enough on your phone. So um, if you um, don't have a laptop or a tablet, I would suggest that you look at um, getting hold of one, actually. It would be very useful for you during remote learning because you have 
physically more space to see the questions the teachers are setting you, the notes they're setting. And the teachers, of course, will be writing on their screen um, because theirs is a touch sensitive screen with a stylus and that will appear, appear on your screen. So you want a large screen to see that yourself. We also would encourage you, if you can, to get a touch sensitive device and a stylus. Um, if you don't have one, don't worry too much because you can add what's uh, a, a pad that you can write on to actually make your screen interactive. We can give you more information about that, but that's the preferred way of learning remotely. During that time, we learned a lot about how to teach uh, remotely. So we believe now we're, we're ready and we're able to give very, very good quality lessons uh, during that time. Bring your own device. And the timetable starts on Monday the 7th. The teachers will be in Abbey because life has returned to normal. Schools are open. So the teachers will be in these classrooms. You will be in the boarding house. So in the picture behind me, look, you can see just where I'm uh, pointing. Where am I pointing here? So just behind me, there we are. These are the classrooms. That's where the teachers will be teaching. And over there, that's the boarding house. That's one of our boarding houses. So you, you may be in that bedroom and the teacher in that bedroom. That's what we're doing to keep safe for the first two weeks. Teachers in classrooms. Homework will be de delivered through um, an app that you will be downloading. It's very, very simple to use. Um, of course, show my homework. We've used this app for many years. It's very easy to use. So that's a mechanism of delivery of homework. We will deliver the full curriculum. There are no compromises for your learning during quarantine. We'll also be extending, enriching what we're offering to you. We have an enrichment program for academic work called Abbey Inspires. What that means is enrichment is the word that we use for giving you more in your subject. So beyond the physics curriculum, why don't we learn about interesting ideas in astronomy? Why don't we learn about interesting ideas in economics that are happening today rather than the A-level textbook, which was written two years ago? So Abbey Inspires beyond the curriculum. That's carrying on in quarantine. Okay, we're also able to offer one-to-one -one consultations because lessons finish at three o'clock. Your teachers are still available for the time after that. So if you're in quarantine, you can make an appointment to say to the teacher, can I have a bit more help, please? I'm not sure I quite understood. The lessons are also recorded. This is being recorded right now. So you'll have the link to all of your lessons. Now, what we learned in that time of March to June is recording lessons is actually very valuable to you because if you didn't understand something, you can go back to the video and learn it from there. So it, it's actually an advantage during the quarantine to have recorded lessons. What would it look like? Okay, here's a timetable, huge amount of information. Don't worry about the huge detail on it. Get your bearings. Along the top, you can see Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So those are the days. And on the left hand side, it's the time. OK, in the UK, of course. So you can see at 9 a.m. UK time, you have a personal tutor meeting. So part of the work we do for you is to look after your well-being, make sure your development is going well and that you're happy and thriving and you're learning well. You have a personal tutor to look after you with that. So the personal tutor will be meeting you during quarantine virtually. So there'll be a personal tutor meeting with you and your new friends on, on the screen every day. The letters represent subjects. So if you're an A-level student, you might have physics in A. You might have maths in C there on Monday. You might have economics in B, further maths in E, and maybe English in D. So you can see there, you'll be busy. There's a long lunch break because we, are, we, we, we need time to recharge all of our batteries. Learning online can be a little tiring um, compared to learning in person. So we're having some longer break for lunch. Then you carry on learning, but we finish at three o'clock. Then you have time with your tutor after a short break. Just catch up, just to say, well, how did it go? What it been like? You can see also there's time for UCAS, that's university advice. I mentioned that carries on. So that happens, uh, you can see there's a slot on Monday at half past three. On Tuesday at quarter past three, there will be assemblies and pastoral education. That's the full curriculum. So as I mentioned, you will not be uh, affected by being in quarantine. You'll just be learning through the computer um, for all of your lessons and food will be brought to you and so on. Okay. So after quarantine, great. Well, let's keep ourselves safe. We have measures in the school. So when you're now coming into school after 14 days, 
Well, we will be measuring your temperature every day. Automatically, we have a sensor camera that staff and basically when you walk through the front door, it automatically senses your camera, your, your temperature. Boarding staff and matrons have temperature guns. I'm sure you're familiar with this. So all staff, all students get tested daily. Okay, there is a one way system in the school. So we, we have large corridors in many of our spaces here because it's a school, but even in the large corridors, one way systems between classrooms. And that just reduces the, the contact between people. And that's what we'll be doing is reducing the risk of transmission in the school. We believe these measures are going to reduce the risk to very, very small levels. We believe that because we've had the measures we've introduced checked by our governors. We're following the boarding school association guidance. So these are the checks that, that all schools are looking at, the, the implementations, the mitigations, if you like. Um, and here, look, these are the um, example of one-way systems. That's down a corridor to get to your bedroom and back. Uh, social distancing will be uh, enacted, of course, as you can imagine. So after quarantine, when you're queuing for lunch, there'll be distance between you. When you're sitting for lunch, there'll be distance. In the classroom, there'll be distanced. Um, again, to keep us all safe. Okay, we are reducing the class size to allow social distance. And there you can see all the, uh, the students facing in the same direction. Again, this is a government advice. So we're following what they're saying to us so that we're not facing each other during lessons. We're all facing the same way. All of these things will help us to stay safe. Um, and of course, there's increased sanitation protection. We are going to be cleaning the classrooms after every lesson. You're gonna be cleaning your hands after every lesson. The desks will be wiped down at the start at the end of every lesson, same as the door handles. In a practical science lesson, the equipment that you touch will not have been touched by anybody else. It's freshly cleaned. And after you've touched it, it gets taken away and cleaned. Uh, same as with art and all other um, uh, uh, subjects where you have materials to touch, they will be touched by you and then cleaned. Okay, so um, you'll see lots of uh, sanitizers around, lots of um, uh, gel and wipes and so on. And you can see there's a picture there of uh, an example. There are screens in many areas where there are reception areas to uh, protect staff and yourself and you can see that's our uh, our main reception there with the uh, the plastic screen okay good what about working and eating and actually studying in the school enjoying yourself in the school after quarantine well as you can see there uh, the dining room will be open with social distancing as i mentioned um, and you can see that's an example of how we'll lay out the dining room so we've altered the pattern of dining here. So there'll be shorter, uh, smaller numbers of students at each dining sitting. Um, so that will allow more space. So if you are a student who's been here before, you may recall the dining room. We used to have two sittings and it was busy. It was great. There, there were a lot of children enjoying each other's company. The staff were eating together. That will be different because there'll be far fewer children and staff eating at any one time in the dining room. I think it's safe to say we've, we've thought about lots of these measures about how we will work when we're all back together after quarantine. Okay, and you can see there the plastic screen. It's a, a non-touch system. So your, your, your school badge is how you will register that you've had your meal. So it's non-touch. That's the way actually we now pay for everything in the UK. And I'm sure it's the same with you. Everything is non-touch in shops these days. Okay, um, brilliant. So. You can see that's the serving area. Clubs will be taking place after quarantine with smaller numbers. We pride ourselves on clubs. We have over 50 different clubs in the school. Many of those will still be occurring. We want us to exercise, to keep fit, to enjoy art and uh, enjoy um, a debate club perhaps, chess. So we will be enacting all our clubs after quarantine, but of course, if you touch your chest set afterwards, you'll be cleaning it with the wipes provided. Um, so all of these measures will be part of the experience, but the experience will not be diminished as a result of the measures. Your education is unaffected. You'll still be getting the same amazing food and you'll still be able to enjoy yourself with clubs and activities and you'll be making new friends and thriving here, no doubt. Um, leaving the college during quarantine, of course, it will not be permitted. Um, after quarantine, you will be permitted to leave 
for durations of time depending on your age but of course in the UK you will then be following the UK measures wearing masks in shops social distancing and so on okay you'll get more guidance on that because this will not be relevant until quarantine is over for you so that's two weeks after you arrive okay what if we have symptoms uh, what if there's a confirmed case what if there's a second spike well what if you can't fly yes the, the what ifs well um, the cases in South Cambridgeshire which is the actual the region that we're in are very very low here if there are cases uh, we have a plan ready to isolate uh, students if they have cases to return to a school quarantine so we can quarantine for 48 hours or longer everybody in the school we can return to that if we need to we will follow UK government advice um, about what to do if there is a suspected or confirmed case as I said it's it's uh, it, it, it's unlikely cases around here are very low and of course by going through quarantine um, we're ensuring that everybody that arrives into the school from other countries has gone through the period of time where any illness will show so at the end of quarantine people leave without the illness um, if there's a second spike we will follow government advice the government will not initiate a national lockdown again this is what they are planning to do instead it will be localized lockdowns i mentioned this is already happening in a city called leicester i believe they're coming out of a localized lockdown so that will be the approach in the uk uh, it, it seems unlikely um, from the way the numbers are going you saw those graphs they're really on the floor now for most of the data patterns of uh, hospital admissions and so on if you cannot fly well We'd really love you to come and arrive by the 6th or 7th of September. We'd love you to start here with us. If you can't, we quite understand. Um, given the, the circumstances, uh, I would be surprised if everybody can arrive. We know not everybody can. We're very sympathetic to you. We will begin all of the teaching remotely. I'll talk about remote teaching um, in a little while. But don't worry if you cannot arrive or if you would like to stay at home for a time instead of flying. We can cater for both of those and you won't be affected with your learning. Um, before I do that, let's talk about uh, quarantine over Christmas. So this is something that I know is a concern. So, for example, in, in a traditional boarding school, um, the boarding houses close at half term. Uh, in, a, in a traditional boarding school, it's two weeks at half term, three weeks at Christmas. There's another half term, there's Easter, there's another half term. So in a traditional boarding school, they have to close their boarding houses. Um, we operate in a different uh, method here. So our boarding houses are always open during half term. So you do not have to go home during half term in a normal year. This year, half term is at the end of October. We would strongly advise you don't plan on going home. I don't think you will be because it seems a little silly how difficult it is to find flights, to come over, to go through quarantine, to then go home for a week. So we really strongly advise please don't go home for the one week in October. We then have a three week Christmas break. Now, traditional boarding schools have to close. We normally close during Christmas because it is, as you may know in the UK, that's the main holiday, Christmas and New Year. It's a huge holiday where schools close. Uh, this year, we are not closing. So we have changed our planning because we understand for many students, for a three week break, going home is a problem because you may have quarantine when you go home. I've heard in some countries there's a two week quarantine and then there's a further one week where they want you to stay at home, which of course is three weeks, which is the Christmas break. So that seems not a great way of spending a three week break. Um, so if you don't want to do that, if you'd rather stay here, we can allow anybody who wishes to stay during Christmas. This is unusual in the UK because of course working for the staff on Christmas Day and New Year's Eve and New Year's Day is, is something that most people don't do, it's a holiday. However, the wonderful staff here, and I have to say I'm so grateful to them, we are going to be open. There will be people working throughout the Christmas break, including Christmas Day, which is a very special day here in the UK. So the boarding will be open, they'll be fully staffed, catering will be fully staffed, cleaning will be occurring. So boarding houses are open, but if you want to stay with us during that special holiday, the three week holiday, you must tell us. 
you don't have to tell us now, but soon after arriving, you must talk to the accommodation team. We need to plan for it. Um, and I'm afraid I will have to add a, a charge to that. So you'll find that information is just over £2,000 for that time because there's a, there's a, a very large cost associated, as, as you can imagine, with people working during what is normally a time when everybody has a holiday. But there we are, that offer is open to you. We'd be very happy if you wanted to, to stay for Christmas in this unusual time. Okay, questions. Well, is there any essential equipment I need to bring? Yes, bring your brain. You're going to use it a lot. Bring your brain, bring your enthusiasm and get ready for an amazing experience in Abbey College, Cambridge. You will be changed by coming here in a really good way. You'll understand how much confidence that you have, you didn't realize. You'll become more independent in a way that you couldn't have thought imaginable. You'll make friends from countries you've never even heard of. Your English level will go through the roof and you will love learning here. What will you need to bring that isn't inside your skull? Well, maybe a pen, some paper. You don't need to bring much. We will provide most of the, inf most of the uh, resources you need here. Um, I would say bring your laptop. Don't forget, because during quarantine, we'll be teaching you through the computer, and I really don't think using a phone is going to be good. Please bring a laptop. If you can, bring a touch-sensitive laptop <clears throat> or a, style, or a, um, a, 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 a pad, uh, uh, like an iPad or something you can write on with a stylus. If you haven't got one, maybe look to see if you can buy one of these pads that plug into a laptop with a USB port that you can write on to make it interactive. So that's the only piece of equipment I would really say you need to bring with you. Um, okay, uh, great, what else? Will lessons be recorded? Yes, so I mentioned already, during quarantine, everything is recorded and you'll be able to look at them whenever you like. What should I expect in the first week? A warm welcome from us, socially distanced, and then quarantine with a group of students with boarding staff in those masks coming in to see you, food brought up lessons uh, will start as I mentioned that's the first week um, yes we'd like to know nice to know more about induction so I've, I've already mentioned a little bit about induction induction is the first day Monday the 7th and that's when you learn a lot more about the running of the school um, I'll show you in a second the the, the team but just a, a quick thought about another question if you are unable to arrive on the 6th or by the 6th of September and you arrive later, maybe you arrive on the 10th of September or the 20th of September, that is when induction will be for you and your quarantine starts then. So don't worry if you miss the quarantine because we have rolling quarantine. In other words, lots of students will start quarantine on the 7th of September. There'll be another group because we know when they arrive that will start on the 10th. Another group maybe will start on the 12th and so on in different areas and their end point will be later. So everybody gets induction, two week quarantine. So we can cater for any arrival time, but please tell us your flight. I know you're in contact with our wonderful accommodation team. Speaking of the accommodation team, this is Stephanie Stafford, who is our leader of the accommodation team. She's worked with Abbey College Cambridge for many, many years. She is fabulous. She works down the corridor. Uh, she loves helping students with accommodation. She really is passionate about finding you the right home from home when you're here. You may well have had a lot of contact with her during the last few weeks and months because she's aiming to get you in the right place so that you'll th you thrive when, you when you're here. So there we are, Stephanie, head of accommodation. She also has two wonderful assistants, Amy and Jessica. You may have already been in contact with Amy and Jessica about the accommodation. And we have Zanette, who you will be in contact with perhaps already with your visa and admissions. So these are the wonderful people that are here right now, down the corridor, helping you before you arrive. And when you're here, they'll be the people if you want to have conversations about a visa renewal, perhaps it's unlikely at the start, of course, you should have a long visa, um, or you want a conversation about your accommodation. So these are the people helping you right now. Okay, so we're getting towards the end. I appreciate I've talked for a long, long time. Thank you for staying with me. I hope it's useful. Please put your questions up if you haven't already, if I've not answered them. Okay, what's going to happen if you're going to be late? So if you can arrive on time, 
When I say on time, I mean the start of term. That's great. We'd be delighted if you could do that. I mentioned it's a 14 day quarantine. You learn through the computer, hopefully with your laptop, with a stylus that you can interact with for the students, for the teacher at the other end. If you're going to be delayed for arrival or you have elected to delay your arrival, we will still start teaching on the 8th of September. So on the 8th of September, all 410 students who will be at Abbey College, Cambridge will start learning. We can't wait for the 8th. So if you are not in the UK, in your bedroom, learning in quarantine, if you're at home, you'll be in your bedroom, learning on the screen. In other words, you'll have exactly the same experience as students in quarantine from your home. So don't worry, you are not going to miss anything. Okay, so during quarantine, everybody has the same timetable, starts at 9am at UK time, finishes at 3pm. So because of the time difference, for many students, that will be towards the afternoon into the evening. We will finish at 3 p.m. for those working at home, because if you're working in a time difference, whether it's seven hours away, that's that's 10 p.m. And we think that's the right time for you to stop working. So if you are working at home in a time difference that's seven hours away, you may well find yourself getting into a pattern of doing your homework in the morning and having lessons in the afternoon and evening. I would not recommend that you try and do your homework after lessons finish because it might be 10 o'clock for you. OK, so for the first two weeks, the quarantine and remote learners are learning in the same way. Quarantine ends for the first group. They start live lessons. They are then different to everybody else who continues to learn remotely. OK, so I hope that makes sense. Um, oops, I've gone the wrong way. No, I haven't. Um, let me have a quick look. I'll just tell you about the remote learning timetable. OK, so. This is a similar structure to what I showed you in quarantine. So those are the children in quarantine who will then go into live lessons. You might look at this and go, that's exactly the same pattern of lessons. You can see 9.15, lesson A, finishing at 3 p.m. So when you're remote learning, you have the same timetable as quarantine students. So we all teach the same material for the same subjects. No one falls behind. When quarantine ends, live lessons start, Remote learners learning at home stay on this timetable. You can see for remote learners, we're actually going to start your day a little earlier because every day at 8.15 UK time, there will be a remote assembly. We're all going to get together and we're going to meet. Now, it won't be somebody talking to you for 45 minutes. There will be activities, events, enrichment. There'll be ways of getting to know each other. You'll be part of the school at 8.15 and then your lessons will start during the day, okay? Don't forget, you'll have the same lessons as the students in college. Okay, good. So just to be clear, live lessons will be happening in Abbey. Remote lessons will be happening from the screen on that timetable. When live lessons start, you can see the timetable looks the same. Sorry if it's a lot of information. If you just look at Monday, you, that, that might, might help you to cut through it. You can see for live lessons now, we're starting at nine o'clock. Finishing ah, not at three, you, you're, you might have lessons going a little bit later because you're on UK time and the school finishes at 5.30 uh, when, when clubs are finished and supper then starts. So you can see your timetable may change a little when live lessons start. OK, so uh, just to summarise where I think we are now, um, from the 8th of September, every student starts learning either from the quarantine timetable with this pattern or remotely with this pattern. So nobody has anything different. Nobody falls behind. Homework will be delivered to everybody remotely, electronically through Show My Homework. Uh, tests will be delivered that way. UCAS advice will be delivered that way. And then after quarantine, for those who are here, we change to this timetable. Very similar pattern, but we're able to teach for some extra times at the end of the day. It may well be some of the lessons are spread out for you just to give you a few breaks during the day. What should you bring with you? Bring your brain, be ready to have an amazing experience, not just educationally, you're gonna make new friends, you're gonna grow into a young adult during your time, but also don't forget, bring a laptop, bring something with a screen that's bigger than a phone screen, please, because remote learning will be better for you. 
Okay, I have talked for a long time. Thank you so much for staying with me. Um, I hope that's been useful to you. And see you in Abbey Cambridge. I put this up just to remind you of what's heading your way. These will be the results that we want you to get in a year or two or three. So look, can't wait to start teaching from the 8th. Can't wait to welcome you into the college, those who are arriving before the 8th. And for those who can't, you're part of the college. Don't forget that you're part of our community from the 7th of September onwards, even if you're at home for a whole term. You're a member of Abbey College Cambridge. You start at 8.15 a.m. in UK time with an assembly being part of it, and you will not be affected. Your learning will carry on exactly as for the children who are here. Great. Well, look, thank you so much for your time. I am going to bring John Menzies back in, who's, who introduced the seminar at the beginning, to see if there are any questions. Hello, Julian. Yes, thank you very much for the session. Very informative. Um, as you can imagine, there there have been a lot of questions <laughs> coming back, so um, lots of lots of discussion. Um, I've done my best to kind of answer those questions in real time. But to our to our guests, please, if if, if you do have a specific question now, please post again, um, and and I'll do my best to we'll do my best to get through them at the moment. Um, obviously, afterwards as well, if you do have any questions post event, please do respond to emails, um, and we can we can deal with those as well. Um, I'll, I'll try and put a few questions to you now, Julian, just to give you a uh, sort of summarize some of the ones that are coming through. Um, one of the, uh, a couple of questions have just been about kind of how does assessment online work? Um, and, and also, um, how will we assist students to access the online learning platform? So I, I guess we're talking about Microsoft Teams. Yes, good point. Okay, so um, at the start of every day, as I mentioned, there is assembly and personal tutor time. So every child has, after assembly, now assembly isn't necessarily always gonna be 45 minutes, tutor time might start early, earlier, every child has access to their personal tutor every day. Their personal tutor is an Abbey College teacher. Abbey College teachers are now highly trained on working remotely, and they work remotely from March the 23rd till the end of June. So they've got lots of experience, and we're continuing to train. We're learning yet more about online learning, uh, for next week, in fact, in fact, we're spending four days before term starts doing yet more training. So don't worry, you will have the ear of your personal tutor from the very beginning. Each morning, you will have time with that tutor and you can say, I, I still don't know how to do this. What you will find is the online resources. I, I mentioned Teams. That's actually Microsoft package, Microsoft Teams and uh, show my homework. You'll find those are very easy to access and sort of self-explanatory, but don't forget, if you don't understand, you just contact your personal tutor. Your personal tutor has a small group of students and it's that person's job to make sure that you're accessing the learning and you're thriving here. Assessment will be done in different ways. We have um, assessed students by homework submission. We've assessed students by open book testing and we've assessed students by live um, invigilation. In other words, a, uh, an exam invigilator watching a student uh, write a test by hand and submitting it. So we've got lots of different ways and we're getting better and more sophisticated at assessment as we go along. So students shouldn't worry about being negatively affected. I know people worry about um, perhaps UCAS predicted grades. How will we do that? Don't worry, we know exactly how to do this. And we will be doing that with your department head leading assessment. And we will understand the constraints that you might have, be working with you to get over any constraints with the technology and with learning. So um, we're, we're very confident that we can deliver all of the teaching, all of the homework, all of the uh, enrichment, the testing, the UCAS advice to all 410 students, whether they're here or remote. Thank you, Julian. And 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 Mike, our director of operations, also just popped in to 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 tell me to to remind everyone or to let everyone know um, that as part of as part of your student kind of um, software package, you will receive um, logins to 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 the Office 365 um, package. Um, so you will have the logins uh, for that provided to you, so you can access all of the online materials and resources that you need. So that will be provided to you as part of uh, the induction. Um, 
uh, quite a lot of questions coming through um, a few a few of the questions have just been around um, kind of the teaching staff so obviously teaching staff aren't quarantining within the college uh, but what kind of steps are we taking to make sure that obviously you know it's a safe learning environment for those students who are learning face to face with the teaching staff coming in yeah so um, uh, you may have seen some of the pictures earlier of the ways that the classrooms are set up with uh, distance between students um, sanitation is probably the single most important thing that anybody could do. In other words, have their hands uh, wiped with a, with, with a hand gel. There's hand gel in every single classroom, in every single corridor, at the, at the entrance to uh, the building, every exit, there's hand gel stations. We also have the, uh, the wipes. I've got a box right here. So you can see even on my table, look, I've got, I've got the hand gel. There you go, I've got the wipes. There you go. So um, every student at the start of every lesson, uh, the desk will have been cleaned by the previous person sitting there. They come in, they then clean it again. So they clean their desk and their chair before they sit down. Um, they clean their hands before they start. The door, and this includes the teachers, the door handles are cleaned before um, uh, the lesson begins, after everyone's come in, cleaned, before everything goes out. So uh, the cleaning uh, um, uh, company that we use here are increasing the cleaning of the school. There's one-way systems, so that means we're not going to be passing in the corridors. Uh, we've got social distancing in staff rooms, in dining rooms, and of course in the UK um, there are various mitigation measures so that staff, um, if they come on public transport, you have to wear a mask on public transport. That's now the law. Um, if they go into a shop, they must wear a mask. And so um, there are already many mitigations, but you'll find in the school um, that the hygiene, that's the most important thing, the hygiene measures are um, very, very stringent here. So um, you'll, you'll see it doesn't affect the learning, but it means people coming in and out of spaces are doing so safely and they've got, they've got sterilised hands and surfaces and sterilised lab equipment. Thank you, Julian. Um, I, th I think another important point to make as well, obviously, we will be checking temperatures um, of, of, of everyone who comes in and out of the building every day. So we have an extra level of, of kind of biosecurity in there as well. Um, we've just been asked about kind of timetables. Um, when are students likely to receive their timetables um, as well? And then I've had a secondary question, which I've kind of answered, but I'll put it again in just terms of what materials do, do, do students need to buy their own books or no, notepads while, yep. uh, to bring them? Yeah, so uh, when will you get your timetable? During induction. So induction is the 7th of September. That's when timetables will be uh, released, uh, uh, published. But um, if I go back a few screens, um, let's, uh, there we are. Let's, let's go with the, this timetable. So this is the remote learning timetable and it's the basis of the quarantine timetable. It's the same timetable for quarantiners and remote learners. So just to get your bearings on this, you will expect if you are um, a remote learner to start at 8.15 a.m. UK time and to finish at 3 p.m. UK time. And you might think, oh, well, when will my lesson start? 8.15. Every student starts an assembly at 8.15 if they're remote learning. So that is the start of your school day. Will you be learning in every single letter block? You can see A, B, C, D. And the answer is, well, how many letters are there? Five. Each letter corresponds to a different subject. If you study A level, for example. So that gives you five different subjects that will fit on your timetable. Well, how many subjects will you study? Five. You'll be studying your four A-level subjects and English because, of course, one of the great drives for all students going to a top university is to increase their English level. Those top universities require IELTS 7, perhaps even 7.5. So that's five lessons, five different subjects. Typically, if you're going into year 12, you will have, and look on that timetable, there are five letters, five blocks. Those letters will, re will be replaced by the subject. So perhaps A, every time you see an A, when you get your timetable, it'll say physics. Every time you see a B, it might say maths. Every time you see C, it'll say economics. So you will have a full timetable. You can see that after every two or even after every one lesson, there's a break. So you've got 20 minutes, 25 minutes to refresh yourself. Um, some of the breaks are a little bit longer. So um, you can see at period four, uh, 
lesson D, perhaps that's physics for you, you either have lesson D or a break, which means in lesson five, if you had physics before, you then have a break. Okay, so there are breaks during this time. But I would be prepared to be in school, if you're working remotely or in quarantine, during all this time. It's just a question of, is it physics first thing or maths? But you will have lessons. If you're studying GCSE, you have more subjects. And so actually, each letter on there corresponds to two subjects because there are six letters, six blocks, six periods rather. You have three of one subject, three of another in each block. So don't worry about the timetable. You will get it before lessons start, but you're going to be busy. Assume that you have a full day with the breaks due, uh, through it. What you need to have, we will provide electronic textbooks. You'll get these things from us. There's no charge. You should have blank lined paper to, to make notes on exercise uh, materials, of course. Um, so you, you'll need that. You'll, you'll need a pen, perhaps, and you'll need your laptop. So don't worry about educational resources. That's our business. We will give them to you. Uh, remote uh, learning will be done through electronic textbooks. We'll be putting up PowerPoint work as we teach you. And also um, we'll be sending in some subjects notes that we've written as well. But that'll all be electronic. So you'll get that in your learning area on a piece of software called OneNote. And as we just mentioned, Teams, OneNote are part of Microsoft and Microsoft Office package. We will give you access to that. So we have a license that you have access to. So that's part of induction, part of what you'll get is these logins. So you don't need to add any technology or buy any books at this point. John. Thank you, Julian. Um, we've, we've just had a couple of questions around quarantine, um, which, which I think I can, can answer because they're quite specific. Um, one of the questions for you, Julian, um, we've just had a couple of, after I've, after I've kind of answered the, the quarantine question, um, we've just been asked for a little bit more detail on kind of how we provide UCAS support and how that's going to work, obviously, through, through, through this new term. Um, but it, the quarantine questions that we had, um, the answers to those were all um, students who are arriving into the UK from overseas will be will be quarantining. Um, we are all aware of some students who are already studying in the UK, and the question, uh, the 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 situation for those students is they will be learning online for those two weeks. Um, and do speak to our accommodation team about your individual circumstances. Um, yep. If you want to quarantine in the college, that is an option, but do contact the the, the admission the the uh, accommodation team to speak about your circumstances so we can we can draw up a plan for you. Okay, that's the that's the responses to those two questions. Thanks, Julian. So the the the, the question we had was about about UCAS support that we'll be providing. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so um, I'm going to go back to the quarantine timetable because for those people who are quarantining here. You can see some of the things I've mentioned, temperature checks that John mentioned, uh, social distancing. So hopefully you now have the quarantine timetable. So these are children in the UK, in their study bedrooms, quarantining. If you take a look on Monday, towards the bottom of the column for Monday, look at period nine, it says UCAS. Look at period nine on Thursday, and Friday, says UCAS. So we've actually timetabled this, this support. Um, that will be delivered to you um, by your UCAS um, tutor. So that will be uh, somebody who, who is expert in your subject. So you'll get help. It's factored in. It's bolted into your timetable. Uh, if you're a year 13 student, we'll be very keen on you making quite a lot of progress during those two weeks of quarantine on your UCAS application. Because... Right at those times, the teachers are not teaching. They're ready to help you with UCAS. And they may have eight students they're helping on UCAS. You can imagine eight students, you get a lot of individual help and you're seeing them three times a week. So there's plenty of time for you to craft your personal statement during that time. So a lot of UCAS help will be given. If you are remote learning, that will be part of the sessions before 9 a.m. So 8.15 assembly times, some of the time after an assembly, the assembly might be 10 minutes only, will be UCAS Q&As with tutors. So people will be available before school starts for uh, remote learners for that kind of work, for uh, UCAS work. Um, a lot of UCAS work is done by um, writing drafts of personal statements. So of course, 
what will happen if you send a draft to us uh, and you're out of the UK time zone, we can then look at it, make our amendments and send it back to you. So a lot of UCAS work is individual feedback on written material, which is easily done through email and then catch up face to face conversations. But like I said, the, the students learning remotely, students student quarantine will get the full service. Thanks, John. Thank you, Julian. Um, we've, we've just had a couple of questions and, and, and I'll, I'll aim to answer this, but Julian, do jump in. Um, students have been asking about, obviously, if they if they leave the country during the October half term, if they come back into the UK, will they have to then re-quarantine for two weeks? Um, so, so tell me if I'm wrong, but I think I think the response to that is if we are quarantining students still at that point, then yes. Um, and students will have their lessons online uh, for those two week period. That's right. Yes. So. Um, the remote teaching, so that so students who will be delaying a start, that service will continue for the whole of a term. So we'll be having remote lessons always in this term anyway. So if you do need to go back into quarantine because you went home, you will be in quarantine learning on the remote timetable, which is the same as the quarantine timetable. I would strongly advise you do not go back in October. I think um, it is unlikely quarantine will be over by then. It's a UK government rule, don't forget. It's not our rule. Um, so it's, it's out of our hands. And but perhaps, perhaps quarantine will be over. Certainly the quarantine situation is changing. There are some countries, mostly in Europe, where there isn't a quarantine. Um, but that, that, that changes daily sometimes. So uh, assume if you go back at October, when you come back into the UK, you'll have to quarantine for two further weeks but we will provide the remote lessons. So you, you will be learning. Thank you, Julian. Thanks for the um, clarification. Um, I, I think we're going we're gonna to have one or two more questions then, then, then wrap up. Obviously, we've had a lot of questions coming through. Hopefully, we've been able to deal with, 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 with most of them. But what we will do is we will kind of um, compile a list of questions and, and, and send some responses uh, to, to them all um, so that everyone can have their question answered. Hopefully, we've, we've, we've done that in a roundabout way. But your specific question, we can answer as well. Um, the, the final question I was going to put to you was um, we had a, a student ask us about if they want if they're starting in January, obviously, if they're doing the online learning and then coming to join us in January, what kind of induction can they expect and how will that look for the January start students? OK, so if you are starting in January. But learning from September. Uh, which I know some students are, some students will spend the one term remote learning, your induction will be on the 7th of September. And the start of induction actually will be every learner, every single student, 410 students in a live assembly. That's the start of induction at 9 a.m. on the 7th. You'll get this information sent to you. Um, induction for the January starters. Again, if there's a quarantine, the induction will be done online and you'll be quarantining for two weeks if you arrive in January. If the quarantine is over then, well, then we do normal induction. And normal induction is face to face involving uh, interaction with house masters, uh, heads of house, you'll meet staff, you'll, you'll see the matron. So it all depends on circumstance um, of the UK at that time, whether quarantine is still in existence or not. But um, don't worry, we, we, we know there are students in all these different permutations. We know we've got students, there are many students arriving before the 6th of uh, September. There are some students we know will arrive in October and we know there are some arriving in January. So we, we, we are planning accordingly to make sure that during that time, education is delivered in the same way to all, no one falls behind, as well as testing and homework and UCAS. And then when people are here, there's quarantine where learning carries on and induction when students arrive in the college. So don't worry, you will get all of the service when you arrive, whenever that is. Brilliant. Thank you, Julian. Um, we, we've still got questions coming in, but I think what we'll do is we'll, pro we'll probably call that a day. Um, what we will do is we will make sure that we're we're kind of, you know, keeping tabs of all the questions that have been answered and we will respond to those as well. And like I say, when you receive the email from us with details, please do pose any questions and we'll pass those on to the relevant person within the college. Uh, but I think um, thank you very much, Julian, for that really instructive, um, really welcoming presentation. I'll let you say goodbye and then we'll sign off. Great. Thanks, John. Thanks for, her, for uh, introducing and having the questions. And to everybody out there, um, 
let's be really positive about this. You're going to love the experience. Um, we're starting in a slightly odd way out of our hands. But as I keep saying, it is our firm belief that the experience for you is going to be unaffected. You will learn whether you're remote in quarantine or, or in the classroom with the same teachers, the same content, the same materials. We provide all of that for you. You'll get the same UCAS advice and you will love it here. You are going to thrive and you yourself will be going to the, one of those amazing universities. So look, um, have a wonderful couple of weeks. And if you are coming to the UK soon, uh, we can't wait to meet you. And if you're not, we can't wait to help you from your home during the time that you're uh, uh, staying there. So all the very best. Thank you for joining us and have a wonderful day.